Ben Merka and the Lord of Arata is a legendary Sumerian account of preserved early post-Sumerian copies, composed in the Neo-Sumerian period. It is one of a series of accounts describing the conflicts between En Merka, king of Anug Kalaba, and the unnamed king of Arata. Because it gives a Sumerian account of the confusion of tongues, and also involves En Merka constructing temples at Erid U and Uruk, it has since the time of Samuel Kramer, being compared with the Tower of Babel narrative in the Book of Genesis. Synopsis. Near the beginning of the account, the following background is provided. In those days of yore, when the destinies were determined, the great princes allowed Anug Kulaba Ziana to lift its head high. Plenty, and carp floods and the rain which brings forth dappled barley were then increased in Anug Kulaba. Before the land of Dilmun yet existed, the Iana of Anug Kalaba was well founded. Iana was a temple in Uruk built in honor of the goddess Inanna, the lady of all the lands. Similarly, the Lord of Arata has himself crowned in Inanna's name, but she does not find this as pleasing as her brick temple in Uruk. Enmerka, thus chosen by Inanna in her holy heart from the bright mountain, then asks Inanna to let him subject Arata and make the people of Arata deliver a tribute of precious metals and gemstones, for constructing the lofty Abzu temple of Enki at Eridu, as well as for embellishing her own Iana sanctuary at Uruk. Inanna accordingly advises Enmerka to dispatch a herald across the mountains of Susan and Anchan to the Lord of Arata, to demand his submission and his tribute. Enmerka agrees and sends the envoy, along with his specific threats to destroy Arata and disperse its people, if they do not send him the tribute, lest light the devastation which swept destructively, and in whose way Kinana arose, shrieked and yelled aloud. I too wreak a sweeping devastation there, he is furthermore to recite the incantation of Nudamude, a hymn imploring Enki to restore the linguistic unity of the inhabited regions, named as Shubur, Hamazi, Suma, Uriki, and the Mata Land. On that day when there is no snake, when there is no scorpion, when there is no hyena, when there is no lion, when there is neither dog nor wolf, when there is thus neither fear nor trembling, man has no rival. At such a time, may the lands of Shubba and Hamazi, the many-tongued, and Suma, the great mountain of the Me of Magnificence, and Akkad, the land possessing all that is befitting, and the martyr land, resting in security, the whole universe, the well-guarded people, may they all address in Lil together in a single language. For at that time, for the ambitious lords, for the ambitious princes, for the ambitious kings, Enki, for the ambitious lords, for the ambitious princes, for the ambitious kings, for the ambitious lords, for the ambitious princes, for the ambitious kings, Enki, the lord of abundance and of steadfast decisions, the wise and knowing lord of the land, the expert of the gods, chosen for wisdom, the lord of Eridug, shall change the speech in their mouths, as many as he had placed there, and so the speech of mankind is truly one. The messenger arrives in Arata, reciting this message to the king, and asks him for a reply to take to his lord Enmerka, whom he calls the scion of him with the glistening beard, whom his stalwart cow gave birth to in the mountain of the shining me, who was reared on the soil of Arata who was given suck at the udder of the good cow, who is suited for office in Kalaba. The king of Arata replies that submission to Uruk is out of the question, because Inanna herself had chosen him to his office and power. But the herald then reveals that Inanna has been installed as Queen Atiana and has even promised Enmerka to make Arata bow to Uruk. Devastated by this news, the lord of Arata finally gives his response. He is more than prepared for a military contest with Uruk, whom he considers no match for his might, however he will submit, on the sole conditions that Enmerka send him a vast amount of barley grain, and that Inanna convince him that she has forsaken Arata and confirm her allegiance to Uruk. The herald returns to Enmerka bearing this reply, and the next day Enmerka actually sends the barley to Arata, along with the herald and another demand to send even more precious stones. 
the lord of Arata, in a fit of pride, refuses and instead asks Enmerka to deliver to him these precious stones himself. Upon hearing this, Enmerka spends ten years preparing an ornate scepter, then sends it to Arata with his messenger. This frightens the lord of Arata, who now sees that Inanna has indeed forsaken him. But he instead, proposes to arrange a one-on-one -on -one combat between two champions of the two cities, to determine the outcome of the still diplomatic conflict with Enmerka. The king of Uruk responds by accepting this challenge, while increasing his demands for the people of Arata to make a significant offering for the Iana and the Abzu, or face destruction and dispersal to relieve the herald who, beleaguered, can no longer remember all the messages with which he is charged, and Merka then resorts to an invention, writing on tablets. The herald again traverses the seven mountains, to Arata, with the tablets, and when the king of Arata tries to read the message, Ishkor, the storm god, causes a great rain to produce wild wheat and chickpeas that are then brought to the king. Seeing this, the king declares that Inanna has not forsaken the primacy of Arata after all, and summons his champion. The remainder of the text has many lacunae, and the following events are unclear, but the tablet seems to end with Enmerka triumphant, possibly installed by Inanna on the throne of Arata, and with the people of Arata delivering the tribute to Inanna, and providing the materials to build the APSU. A sequel text, Enmerka and Ensugarana, seems to continue the epic.